What's up, buddy? Yo. I'm not your buddy guy. I'm not your guy, buddy. Five points for anybody who knows what that is. <laughs> and then I'd be like minus five points because you know what that is. Uh, I definitely know what that is. Yeah. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Oh. All right. My legs hurt so bad today. <laughs> oh my God. Do I ask follow up questions or just let that lie? No, it just, I don't know. It's just ex- extra sore today. I see. Um, so I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm sitting today. <laughs> Alex, I'm not so sure, but all right, fair enough. All right, guys, if you're just getting in here, uh, feel free to uh, say hello in the chat box or wherever you are. Uh, we can see it. It all comes into one flow over here, as you can see on the side. So whether you're on the business page or any of the other channels you may be watching this on, uh, if you want to be in the bulk of the conversation, uh, that generally happens inside the, the Facebook group. So if you're in the old Souls and Seekers group, that's probably the best place to be. But you're welcome to watch this on whatever channel you might be on. Um, So say hello, hit some likes, hit some uh, hearts, let us know you're excited to be here and to be in this training. Um, If you are uh, brand new to our community, we'd like to uh, personally welcome you. Uh, We also have some cool announcements and some awesome resources for you today. Um, So let me just get started with the, uh, the resource here. What's up, Ashley? Nice to have you back here again. If, uh, if you are just getting into this group, um, something that we hear, hear regularly from both people who sign up for programs and don't is that one of the best assets that we have here is our uh, meditation practice. Okay. Now, uh, even if you've done meditation before or you've never tried it before and you've always wanted to, uh, this is definitely not your typical meditation practice. Uh, most people know meditation practice as something to kind of like try to quiet your brain or relieve stress. And while certainly this, um, what we call an active healing meditation can do those things as well, they are just a a natural byproduct of doing the practice itself. It's not um, the actual focus of the work. So um, if you want that, you can head over to our our messenger, which is, um, you could probably see it actually on this post. Yeah, you'll just see it says m.me forward slash Satori Prime. You just click on that and you uh, write us the word gift and we will get over that meditation practice to you. So that's the easiest way for you to, uh, to get it. We'll just send you the link for it and um, you can start practicing it right away. We recommend minimum seven days, but truly um, science will show you that you need 21 days to create a habit. And once you kind of understand how the meditation works, it's something you can replicate even while you're waiting online and will benefit you way more uh, greatly than um, swiping through reels on TikTok. Uh, so check that out. Um, the other thing we want to let you know is that, uh, if you've been with us for a while, even if you're new, uh, there are going to be some structural changes, um, in the group and to our company, uh, because, um, the vision of our company has always been less of a company and more of a transformational, uh, movement as the community has grown. It has kind of taken upon itself in certain ways to, um, create support channels and other avenues for people who come into this work to really get the type of support that they need. And uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for the hellos. And, you know, something that we have seen from from 20 years of coaching people, uh, bro, believe it or not, um, March is officially, I think, 20 years for us doing work, or at least for me. That's where I got started. March of your uh, March, what, 20 where I, I took my first uh, dip into this kind of work. So for me, I'm, I'm actually going to be on my two decades. I think you were like May or something. Yeah. Um, yeah anyway, um, you know, I, I try as we might in all the years that Elon and I have done uh, work within ourselves, there's definitely an aspect of, uh, and we'll explain this today as in the training, 
where having a, a self practice is really, really important. However, an, an even more crucial part of training um, for, for all of us is the ability to sit with other people. Uh, and again, I'll explain why this is, but in short, our nervous systems ping each other. And when you were a little boy or a little girl, what you wanted from mom and dad when you were feeling overwhelmed or angry or stressed out was uh, mom and dad's key role is to actually help a child learn how to navigate and regulate their nervous system. Now, that's maybe a new thing for you to hear, but if you kind of think about it when you're upset or when you continue to be upset, your nervous system is in dysregulation and you are kind of a little bit out of your mind. Like you're kind of get hijacked when you're in a dysregulated state and a part of you takes over that is a, a type of pattern that we have. And so in order to get out of pattern, we actually need to sit with other people who are not in pattern. So our system, our nervous system can learn how to um, uh, regulate itself. And this is one of the ways we get out of pattern and actually rehabituate uh, new ways of being and new actions in our lives that are free from the conditioning and patterns that most of us are, are looping in. And so I say all this because we need a community. We need a community to help each other heal. And Elon and I have found that that's kind of beautiful is that like humanity to transform and evolve. We actually need each other. I mean, who would have thunk it, you know, like we actually need to sit with other people and <laughs> get related and have like authentic connection with them. Um, but in all that we've tried to work on ourselves, if you want to expedite everything that you're doing in terms of transformation in healing, if it's around relationships or business, mental well-being, emotional well-being, uh, even your relationship to money, like all of that is patterned into you with what you saw or didn't see or perceptions you had at, at home around mom and dad or your caretakers. And so like we, we legit need each other. And so I say all that because a lot of people in the community have started stepping forward and becoming more leaders in this community. And we wanted to uh, set a stage to make that a, an easier transition for those of you guys who do stick around for who do go through programs, who do uh, get competent in this work and become practitioners and even masters of this work that you can become a voice here in this community and, uh, help people go through this process that you're going through because wherever you are in your process, you're just a little bit or a lot ahead of somebody else who's just getting started. And so that's always your value is reaching your hand back to somebody who's just getting going and being like, I've been there. Here's how you deal with what you're going through right now. And so it's not just uh, Elon and me being figureheads of Satori Prime anymore, but like really a community structure that's going to be um, slowly kind of rolled out here. Maybe not so slowly um, over the next weeks and months here. Uh, and that excites us greatly. We just had a, a conversation with our, our core um, coaches about this and everyone's very, very pumped about it. So I just wanted to kind of drip that in because you might start seeing, not might, you will start seeing trainings on Monday. Uh, in this group trainings on Wednesday and Thursday in this group, we're going to actually have a, a four day training schedule. So it won't just be Elon and myself on these Tuesday lives anymore. There's going to be a lot more uh, faces stepping forward that you'll get to know. And, you know, everybody has their own unique perspective. Everybody has something unique that they care about, whether it's uh, familial or working with children or they're like really working on their business right now and dealing with their money conversations or, you know, they're in uh tackling their health or, you know, so something. Right. And so like, that's the point is like, this work is holistic and wherever you point it, it's going to make a difference because at the end of the day, you're struggling with that and dealing with that because the foundation from which you perceive that struggle is just what, what is what, you know, it's just, it's just this one perspective. And so for people who are like, you know, we have people in our community that are really dedicated to family and really dedicated to kids transformation. And I've done a ton of work in that space. And Elon and I are really, really committed to that too. And our, our, we're, we're stretched thin on our time like everybody else, right? We, there's so much we're doing with our team and our business and putting together structures and stuff like that. So having people step forward um, feels very, very in alignment for what we want to create and very exciting for us because it's like less work for us and, and more value for everybody else, right? So yeah, and I just want to offer like if, if you're someone that's listening and you have a gift or a passion or wisdom that is wanting to be shared and you've just kind of been sitting on the sidelines and thinking I'd like to one day someday start this coaching business um, I can tell you from our perspective and those that came forth and asked us to uh, create this kind of platform that going out on your own 
to create something like this, it, it just, it's, I don't want to say a monumental undertaking, but whatever is the word or phrase for the thing right below that, that's, it probably is there. Um, <clears throat> so if you've been sitting on the sideline and wanting something like this, then it's a great opportunity to plug into something where you already have a lot of the systems and the processes and the support and the customer support and the community support already built in. And we're inviting you to come here and actually create uh, individualized programs within the umbrella of Satori Prime, right? And so the idea is that Guy and I relinquish control, if you will, of Satori Prime and it, Satori Prime becomes this collaborative effort. So uh, if you've been sitting on the sidelines and you want to have a conversation about what that could look like for you and to partner with us, et cetera, then um, please don't hesitate and reach out. I'd love to have a conversation with you and see what it is that you want to offer and how we can make that work. So cool. Yeah. Beautiful. So if hopefully you guys are excited about that. We're certainly excited to see how this evolves. Um, you know, we're, we're creating structures and we know like some things will work, some things won't. That's just kind of human nature, uh, but it'll be a, a work in progress. And, you know, it, it really does take a village. Um, I always say if it, if it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to transform a human being. You know, it takes a lot. Uh, it takes a, a good amount of support because people need certain things at certain times. And, you know, just say in the chat box, like how many of you guys know that asking for support is a really, really big challenge for you? You know, say I in the chat box. I know it certainly is for pretty much everyone we come across, right? It's like sometimes people feel like it's easier to like chew on glass than it is to ask someone for help. And, you know, part of the reason is, is just, it's like some of this heartbreak that we experience as children and where we didn't feel like people were there for us and not attuned to our needs and stuff like that. And so our, our system felt that pain and then created all these patterns to defend and protect us from having to experience that pain again. Again, say I in the chat box, if you know what I'm talking about. And because of that, we're, we're so scared to reach our hand out because heaven forbid it's not met. We're going to have to experience that, that heartbreak again, that pain again. And so we will, we will not, you know, we will basically not ask for what we need, abolish our needs and not ask for support because we don't want to experience this, this, this heartbreak again, which makes total sense. And so part of the, the function of this community, and if you end up doing programs here, you're going to find out really, really fast, is having a, uh, practices that we put in place where when you reach for support, you're met with support. Now, I want you to really think about what that means, not just at the level of mentality, but what that means for your nervous system and your energetics and how that changes the way that you feel about the world, about, you know, whatever your definition of God is and intelligence. Cause of course, if mom and dad weren't supportive and they weren't there, then we start this rupture with our uh, connection to source and God and divine intelligence, whatever you want to call it. And so like all, it has a rippling effect when we are unable not only to ask for support, but actually feel our system opening and receiving support. And for those that want to have more money, that want to, you know, learn how to like manifest what you want, that want to have great relationships and all this kind of stuff, you also got to get that humans love to support. Most people really want to help. But what happens when you're in a relationship where the other person's never open to support? What happens when you want more money in your life, but your system literally is defending itself and unable to receive energetic support? You, you, you mitigate, you narrow the bandwidth, the energy that can flow to you in every area of your life. And so we want to make sure that we are doing work on this to recondition, not just how we think about it, but how we feel about it, how our energetic works around it, because this opens up a lot of beautiful pathways and, and avenues, um, you know, in terms of our ability to uh, manifest greater. You know, it's not about it's not about learning to manifest. It's learning how to manifest from alignment We're we're all manifesting. Everything in your life right now is a manifestation of the energy and perceptions that you have. Nobody learn. Nobody needs to learn how to manifest. However, what you have manifested is again a representation of what's within you. This vib vibratory field that's within you. And if, so, if you want to transform your life, that vibratory field gets to reorganize itself and take on a new structure, so that you can have more of what's in alignment for your desires and your intentions. Okay. Uh, just just a real quick thing about that. You look. Uh, how many of you guys in the comment box? You you 
know or have heard of the concept of stories, right? Like the stories that we tell ourselves or the programs that we run and things like that. How many of you guys just, just say yes or I in the comment box if that's something that is uh, familiar to you? And when we talk about stories or programs or things like that, um, notice how we live in a world or beliefs. Yeah, Tina, great, great uh, addition. Or just notice that you live in a world where you put yourself in life circumstances that tend to reaffirm that story or that belief. So how many of you guys know what I'm talking about when I say that? It's like you notice that there's this cyclical pattern that you keep putting yourself in circumstances where a story or a program gets validated over and over and over again. How many of you guys are, are able to track that and notice that in your, in your life experience, right? Just say I or yes or me. And so... <laughs> What there is to realize, and this is what Guy was kind of alluding to, it's like when we manifest, right, we tend to manifest that which we are comfortable with, even though we might not like it, right? There's a certain story. For example, um, a lot of people have this story of uh, abandonment, right? Like abandonment's a big one for, for Guy and I. Uh, I'll just speak for me. So abandonment's a big one for me, right? And so another one could be like, I can't rely on people. Like no one's there for me, right? And then just start to notice how often that plays out in your life, in relationships and circumstances, whether at work, whether intimate, whatever it is, where it's like people keep proving to you that they're not reliable or people keep proving to you like they're, they're going to go away or whatever it might be. I want you to get that that all happens because there's an energetic alignment inside of you and that frequency, not from mind, right? Like you've worked on this, you've understood where it got created, how it got created, why it got created. You know all that stuff. So conceptually and from a line place, you already know. And yet it still keeps happening. And that is because what guy was saying is like, you can't not manifest in your life. Manifestation is something that we do moment by moment by moment. What we're really wanting to know is how do we actually manifest the things that we want? And here's the truth. As long as those parts inside of you are there, the hurt little abandoned ones, the one that feels like no one's ever there for them, the one that doesn't feel worthy, the one that doesn't feel good enough. As long as that piece is in there, scared and activated, it is emitting an energetic frequency, like a beacon, like a beep, 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 beep. And to that frequency is going to always attract that which is in perfect energetic alignment to that. So if your story is no one is ever there for me or people betray me or I'm not worthy or whatever, can you start to see how that little frequency is going to continuously bring into your experience things that activate it? And so if you want a different reality, instead of trying to figure out how to manage yourself to go and try to like manipulate and create a new reality, what would be far more effective and far less effort, in my opinion, is to actually go and be with those aspects, alter the energetic frequency inside, and then just watch as the external world begins to validate and through this feedback loop, give you new information. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how hard you work, how smart you get, how many books you read, if the internal system is programmed to that, if the story is there, not here, in here, then you will keep manifesting the same things. And for those that, that kind of feel that, just say yes in the comment box, like noticing how much effort and work you've put into something 
and yet it keeps showing up the same way. Yeah. Beautiful. So that was a, a longish introduction. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you guys. No, it's beautiful. I, and I think it, it all works with what I what we want to share here. Yeah. So we want to talk about like three ways to, to activate your self-realization, right? And this is not, here's the thing, like we can't put enough stuff here that we're doing on the court, right? Like the meditation, as Ashley's saying, like this body scan stuff, right? That That is your first work that you can do that we know of that's purely experiential. Like I started calling it DELM, D-E-L-M, which is direct experience learning methodology or model, whatever you want to call it. So DELM, right? And so there's two things that we focus on is this direct experience learning, which without direct experience, nothing in your life is going to change. It's just not. And the other one is... Um, we call it, I call it SEP now, which is subtle energetic practices, right? And so here's the, why I'm saying this, because there are three levels to transforming and healing a human being, okay? And if you track this, I'm going to kind of talk about it in a macro way, but if you kind of talk, think about it in, in your personal experience, you'll be able to map this too. Every human being has what we call a self-to-self -self experience, my experience with myself, right? And there's all sorts of patterning and stories right there like that. We could probably spend a lifetime on that kitten caboodle right there. Okay, yeah. at, the at the at the next layer up, kitten caboodle. It's first, first, you're, first. Time. You're phrasing <laughs> recently. There's. Let me put. What was it? Schmep in your pep in your schmep. I call it schmep in your schmep. Schmep in your pep. Yeah. Kitten, <laughs> kitten caboodle. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. These are all very transformative spiritual words. Like yes, these are. You have to be at a very up. very high enlightened state to be able to drop these up. things. Try to keep up. <laughs> Try to keep up. Uh, keep up. These are high vibe. This is high vibe language. That's uh, so good. So uh, level after after your self to self practices, you have uh, self to other, right? So it's like your relationship to another being, another person. Okay, and then there's of course their relationship to you because we we're these like multi dimensional, very interesting beings that can our awareness can look at life from our perspective, but can also like flip the view and like think that we can perceive our reality from another person's perspective and how we look. And a lot of people are very much trapped by this because they're like, I need to look good for other people. And so they don't make ch choices in their life aligned from what they're feeling in their system. They're making choices in their life in alignment with what they think other people want them to do so that they can look like the person that they think other people want them to look like. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but hopefully you get my, my drift here. Okay. So that's the self to other. And then number three is self to group, right? Like how the group perceives you, how you perceive the group. And if you look at this, you will realize that moments that we call trauma. And I think trauma is an okay word, but here's the problem with, with using the word trauma. When we think of trauma, we really think of like somebody who's generally pretty fucked up. Like they've had a, something really terrible happen to them, right? Like a you're in a war and like something terrible happened to you experience like massive trauma, PTSD. But when we, when we do that, then we think I'm not that traumatized. Only those people are what well, we don't realize, like even like small infractions of misattunement inside of our nervous system to us internally is a really big deal because things are going to hit those quote unquote traumatized parts all the time, even if it's very subtle and it will dictate the way that you think, feel and act in this world. And so trauma is happening to everybody. Uh, Gabor uh, Mate, who's got a beautiful new book, expresses this wonderfully in that book. It's called uh, The Myth of Normal. And he's just coming to these realizations, you know, things that we're talking about here very openly in his late 70s. And he starts, and he, he you know, I kind of borrowed that a little bit from him. And I believe the same thing. Like trauma, it, it needs to be like, we need to stop thinking of it as such a, like a, a this terrible thing or only happens in terrible situations. Trauma is really anywhere where there was a misattunement while you were growing up to the needs that you had. Okay. And then those needs, you, you either relegated as not important or you have to defend yourself because something got too sensitive or overwhelming. And so you want to realize that whatever's going on in your life got conditioned in because of perceptions you had of yourself and others, because of, uh, I'm sorry, of yourself, perceptions you had of others and others to you. And then at level of group, we all had that moment at school where like everyone laughed. We've all had that moment in an intimate relationship or with a friend that like didn't go well and was like really traumatizing. Like they said, they don't want to talk to you anymore. Or, you know, you cut that relationship off and you really dealt with heartbreak. 
And so we want to understand that if you're only going to do work, which is what most, most personal development people, quote unquote, do, is they do work on themselves. They read books, they take courses, but it's like it's this intrinsic internal world that they're constantly trying to manage and deal with when the reality is the way that you feel in your nervous system has to do with all three layers. And so how can we get to self-realization? How can we have this conversation of we are all one? Like truly, we are really all one. We all come from the same source and share the same awareness, whether you know it or not yet. We can we can kind of quote unquote prove this to you through your own experiences. How can we as people really transform, evolve, and heal ourselves if we're not willing to participate in healing work with others and in healing work with groups? And so the way we approach our, our programs is that's exactly how we do it. We do self-to-self -self work, we do self-to-other work, we do self-to-group work uh, at all three levels because that's what Elon and I have learned over the years is you can't heal yourself on your own. And like I said, in a weird way, if you step back from it and you're like, oh, that's disappointing. I have to talk to people and look at them in the eyes and sit with them. I don't like people at all. It's weird. Personal development people like love people, but they don't like people simultaneously. If you know what I mean. <laughs> If I mean what I mean by that, because in, at one level, when you're doing personal development, you like realize the potential of humanity and like how beautiful we can become in certain moments. And on the other hand, you step out into the world and you and you see a bunch of people not claiming their potentiality and you realize you live in that world. And so there's this like, I know what you are and I love you and I fucking hate it that we're not there yet. <laughs> like this, So it's just like weird conundrum in the system, right? Like, well, what do I do? And then you're like, oh, I guess I'll just become a better human being and see what happens. And so I just well, want to open it up with that because these are, these are, are, are the three ways that we can start healing. And just because someone wrote it in the group, Sarah is saying codependency is a good thing. Um, yeah, she's right in a lot of ways it's and not in the way that people think about codependency um i love just using gabor i was listening to a podcast he did and i think it was with joe rogan and you know he, they were talking about how like this generation is often talked about like this needy generation where their parents did too much for them and this or that and the other and he's like how come you know there's certain and and just so you guys understand the research is on children is that parents who keep their children near them, what would look like a codependent type of behavior for, you know, the first four five, six, seven years of life and like give them a lot of love and nurturing and stuff like that. They have followed these people now for 30 or 40 years. Those people are the most stable, uh, best in relationships, most successful, uh, well put together human beings on planet earth. Okay. That's, that's scientific proof now. Okay. And so he said, well, how come about those kids that aren't who had like the mother there all the time. And this is beautiful because this is what you want to realize that most of humanity has not realized yet. We always think that it's only the actions that we're taking that are important. At one level, that's true. At the other level is there's the energy inside your body, this like feeling that you have, this emotion, energy, emotion, that you're, you're actually sourcing thoughts and actions from in your life. So if you have a mother who's a nervous wreck, she has a ton of anxiety in your system and she has a lot of fear that her child is going to get hurt in some way in this world. And she keeps the child very, very close, almost like in a prison and doesn't let him out. That energy is passed through the mother to the child's nervous system. And then the child also becomes a nervous wreck. And so then you get the quote unquote, like mama's boy, right? I don't, I hate using the terminology, but I'm just going to use it because it's, it's known uh, in, in the culture. And those people are not well stabilized and not very successful and don't feel confident and don't know how to take risks and all that kind of stuff. And so you'll have on the surface what looks like two nurturing mothers, but one is doing it from stability in her nervous system and allowing the child to explore, but still being very caring and nurturing. And the other one is you have a frantic, nervous, twitchy mother, right? Who's like holding the baby. And if you're that kind of mother, it, I, please don't make yourself wrong. It's not, it's not your fault that you ended up that way. That's what was taught to you during your nurturing process. And so that's how your nervous system got to learn to deal with the world. And that's where you have the over anxious mother who's very worried all the time. And my mother-in-law is like this, Elon's mother-in-law is like this, right? And they're still very nurturing, loving mothers, but they pass down that worry to their children. And all three of them are dealing with that at different levels of their lives. So, you know, I'm pointing at it because we want to understand, we want to start getting clear that what's ultimately so important 
is our nervous system response. And that is knee jerk. That just happens in the moment. And so none of us are going to be able to just do mindset work and say, okay, good. My nervous system is never going to do that. Yeah, give that a shot. I call bullshit on that every time. I don't care how much work you do. You get in a situation that causes you stress. You are going to fall back into some old patterns that you really, really don't like. And so it's important to understand what the mind is doing so we can at least become aware of it, catch it, and make new choices in our lives, and which lead to new actions and new results. Crucial. But at the deeper level, we want to be able to recondition this energetic patterning that's happening in humanity. And if you're like, well, it's too late for me, I'm already fucked up and this is how I am now. Again, I'm going to call bullshit on it. The only reason it has stayed the same is the you have created an environment unconsciously around you that keeps you in that loop and in that pattern. Because your reality around you and all your friends and all the people around you are chosen to be there because they don't, they don't hit those parts too much, basically. Yep. And so you get a reflection of reality, just like when people curate their social media news feeds, you're curating your reality in such a way that doesn't hit those parts too much. But in the same way that it doesn't hit those parts, you are still stuck in that prison now for the rest of your life. Your prison doesn't have walls, but it was unconsciously created through and, and it's energetics. And so your nervous, nervous system keeps getting that feedback over and over again. So you go, oh, this is how it is. This is how it is. And it's not. And so what's crucial is to come into a different environment of regulated nervous systems, or at the very least people working on regulating their nervous systems and start getting a new feedback loop for your nervous system. Cause just the same way that you picked it up from energetics when you were a child, it's not like you became seven or 10 or 20 or 30 and your body's like, that's it. No more energetic signaling for me. I'm just a mental being now. Bullshit. Again, bullshit. If it worked that way when you're a kid, it works that way when you're an adult. And so it continues to learn through energetic signaling, but people's lives don't transform because the environment continues to signal them the same way. So if we want transformation to take place, we got to change the environment and start getting new signals from people. Yeah. And uh, it's something as you were talking about, I, I, I don't even know where I read or where I heard, but uh, people get talk about responsibility all the time. And if you break up responsibility, you'll see that it is response able, right? So the ability to respond. So where most humans are stuck, kind of what we were talking about before, like humans are stuck in a reactive state all the time. Because when your system is in a fight or flight scenario, which is 99% of the time for most humans, because we never got a template from our guardians or our parents on what it means to be downregulated. Ashley was just talking about how her and her uh, children uh, send stress to each other back and forth and they're kind of in this loop. It's like, yeah, because Ashley's parents didn't give her the ability to downregulate her system, right? So she's in a constant hopped up state where most people are and not for nothing, like the world is a pretty intense place right now um for anyone that actually turns on the news it gets very intense right i i highly recommend doing like a news detox if if it's impacting you um so if we never got the template on what that looks like to downregulate, to find and stabilize well-being and peace then we can't give that to anybody else right and so we keep looping these things over and over and over. And if we're looping, we're in a constant state of reactivity, meaning that everything inside is very, very tight and very, very on edge all the time, whether that is because of fear or lack or uh, worry or whatever it might be. But if you can feel like the nervous system is like almost on edge, like twitchy, like, uh, right? The mind doesn't like that. And so the mind is going to want to create anything to numb that, not to remove it or heal it or anything, but just to remove it. And so people lean on drugs or alcohol or food or no food or sex or exercise or running, whatever it is, right? 
creating the ability to respond to your external world gives you access to something. So when the external world is coming in and instead of a knee jerk reaction, you actually have the ability to just sit with that and allow for the experience to be just as it is and just as is not, not try to change it, not try to make it go away, not to try to have more of it. What you end up doing is you bring all of this life force back into your body. And when you bring this life force into your body, you're able to do incredible things. This whole conversation got started by it's not the actions that you take. It's about the energy behind the action. So if you're taking action from stress, from worry, from concern, from fear, from lack, that's what you're manifesting. It doesn't matter how incredible you think the action is. That energy is what imbues it. So when we wind that whole thing back and you get this ability to just be with be with lack, be with sad, be with stress, be with overwhelm. What happens is emotion is energy in motion. The acceptance and ability to witness something shifts it. How many of you guys have noticed that even naming it sometimes, like when you, when you say to someone like, wow, I'm really nervous right now, or I'm really scared or whatever it might be, just the naming of it creates a shift. So that's like baseline, right? Now, imagine being able to actually watch it with awareness and appreciation and even gratitude and even love for some of these parts. The energy that has been bound up inside that keeps your nervous system like all riled up that you react from ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. And then you have response ability. Because now you're not reacting to something. You're actually here, centered, aligned. I use this visualization all the time. The difference is being swept around in the tornado where like you get pulled to the edge and you're just spinning around like a wet noodle, right? And she's like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Right, like that versus finding the center of the storm where you can watch all the stuff happen around you. So it's still zipping around, right? Nothing changes. The circumstance is still there. It's still zipping around, but it doesn't hook you in the same way. It doesn't hook you and grab you to the edge where you're being whipped around. You could just watch it from here and go, oh, that's a lot of chaos, but you're not of the chaos or in the chaos. You're just simply aware that there is chaos. Yeah, that's a beautiful metaphor. So, a question you guys might have is, well, how do I know where I am? You know, how do I know where I'm stuck? Okay. Uh, and the easy answer is we're all stuck everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's the easy answer, right? And like, well, how can, but how can we identify like, all right, well, where, where do I get to work? Right. And for us, it's like, again, I want to say like, we've just from working with so many thousands of people, tens of thousands of people over the years, it's just become kind of clear. It's like, Hey, you got to handle self perspective you got to handle like your perspective of the self you got to understand how the ego and identity is forming itself and reaffirming its beliefs to itself and until you can see that mechanism at work it's never going to stop right like you're never going to have a choice about the way it works it's just going to it's just going to keep running on automation you won't realize that you have a choice about that about how it's creating stories and how it's putting you into circumstances and situations and so like at the level of mind that most people are at I would say that most people, again, I'm generalizing here, so I apologize if, if that's if you're like, that's not me, fine, great. I'm, I'm happy for you that that's not you. But like for, for general, the general population, they see themselves as a victim of their circumstances. You know, whether it's money or government or their relationships or whatever it is, it, it, it has not been taught to us that, hey, you know what? Like people don't have these conversations like a, there's a vibratory field in your body and that's creating the reality and there's a network feedback loop that's coming in because you programmed everybody around you to respond to you in a certain way. Like people don't talk about this. They're just like, my mom sucks. <laughs> my work sucks. Government's terrible. COVID bad, right? Like, and, and when you're in that place, it's very scary. And those are people who generally watch the news and are pulled in because their life, and where their limbic system is constantly focused is on fear. And so news and other, you know, structures like that, 
use fear to make you pay attention. They know that if they can grab your eyeballs by scaring your nervous system and, and your nervous system is like, I got to watch this because I got to learn how to create safety. And of course, all you're feeling is fear in that moment. And of course, if what you're feeling is fear and that's what's emanating out of your body 24 seven, and like, you probably have like a tight belly and like a tight chest and you're kind of like closed up like this. You don't like to look at people in the eyes. These are all examples of nervous system responses when we're in fear. And guess what? They know how to jack your limbic system. They know how to jack your nervous system. That's what they're doing. And guess what? You end up buying shit because, and making other people very, very wealthy as you continue to perpetuate fear into your life. And then people become something that you fear. And then you start understanding why we've gotten to such tribalism more recently over the last few years, because we've had a lot of scary shit going on and it's being leveraged to pit people against each other when they don't need to be whatsoever. It's just internal fear. And of course, when you're in that place, it makes total sense that everything is the enemy, right? So if you're in that place, that's your first major breakthrough. Your first major breakthrough is, you know what? I am the source of this reality. I am the source of the experience that I'm having. Now this often gets conflated with responsibility because people are like, well, I'm not responsible for that happening in the world. I'm not responsible that this happened. I didn't cause that. You're right. Maybe circumstantially you didn't, but you are responsible for the way you are reacting to it. You guys know that some people went through COVID. They didn't leave their houses for two and a half years. They, they melted their entire the house with chemicals and they wear masks all the time. And if that's you, that's you like, that's, that's where you're at with it. Right? No, no, no judgment. Like you had your own experience. Other people, had nothing about it. I mean, it was an inconvenience, right? Because the world was was in shutdown. But like, personally, that was not my experience of COVID. I had, a, I had a really beautiful few years while that was happening and certainly inconveniences, but like, I didn't live that reality. I see people who've lived that reality and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. You haven't been out of the house in two years. Like, you haven't seen a person in two years. There's a big difference in how our nervous systems are perceiving and experiencing that particular reality, right, wrong, and different. I'm not. I'm not judging one way or the other. I'm just giving that as an obvious example because we all went through that together, right? So, same situation, two completely different responses, two completely different lives, two completely different lives. It's the same always, everywhere. There's always something trying to jack your nervous system to tell you that it's not safe and too scary. And you got to realize this is happening to all of us at the very subtle levels. Because it's the experience we had as children when we didn't feel safe in our nervous systems. One of the, you know, we joke about this internally when we come to, when people come to programs, we say, these programs are really about your nervous system finding safety. But if we said that on the front end to people like, hey, come here and feel safe. They'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm safe. I'm home. I have a gun. <laughs> right. I'm good. I feel great. I feel great. I'm fine. But, but you wouldn't know that's a thing. That's the challenge is that your, your mind state is, is that you're fine. But until you look underneath, how would you know that you don't feel safe if you felt that way, if you've now felt that way for decades upon decades upon decades, you don't even remember that there's another way. So until you start doing this work and actually inviting safety and, uh, um, and this, you know, uh, support into your life, the only way human beings learn anything is through contrast. So when you have nothing to contrast, your assumption is this is the way that it is. And so this work in the beginning is about creating distinctions for the mind that create contrast from the reality that most people are living into. Like, hey, this these distinctions open up a whole new paradigm of reality to you where you are at choice always. No matter what's happening in your life, Choose, 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 choose. It can be scary or it can be fucking amazing, right? We've all heard that Albert Einstein line. It's like, everybody gets to choose either life is a miracle or life is a disaster. I know that's not the exact thing. It's, it, it's uh, the choice is uh, the world is a safe place or the world is a scary place. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and obviously, if you're stuck and it's a scary place, your again, your responses, your relationships, your finances, everything everything, everything is going to be guided by those principles. And so the first thing we get to do is, is bring you out of quote unquote, that hell, <laughs> basically that internal hell and put 
the power back into your hands so that you realize you actually do have a say. And when you transition from there, you go from being that life is happening to me to life is happening for me. And this is how we get into level two and I'll let Elon kind of um, take it over from there. But that, that transition alone, if that's all you got from doing our work, your life is never going to be the same again. That's all Elon and I did for 15 years. Our lives were dramatically improved, enhanced, you know, more confidence, uh, better ability to deal with things that we were afraid of, um, you know, much more successful, you know, again, it just opened up a whole new world uh, for us in terms of who we could be and the actions that we decided to take in this world, right? And now, so now we're at that level two and Elon will tell you guys about what kind of opens up there for people. Yeah, so there's there's something that kind of happens uh, that I just want to, I'm going to offer this in two two different ways. There's a transition that happens uh, when one is I don't want to say complete because there's never a completeness, but there's a, a, a place where one touches that mindset work, this kind of like the stuff that's been around for, you know, 60, 70 years, the, the Tony Robbins and Wayne Dyers and most of the, the schools of thought and personal development where you just kind of like bump against the edge of the capabilities of that. How many of you guys have had experiences, really, really beautiful experiences with certain practices in mindset, maybe it was like reframing or knowing that there's a voice in your head or, you know, having like a series of questions that you ask yourself. And when you first started, they were really, really powerful. And then they almost like lose their effectiveness a bit. How many of you guys have, have kind of started to touch that place where that, that form of education, you're, you're starting to reach the limits of like, it's not quite working in the same way that it did. If, if that's you, just, um, you know, share that in the, in the comment box. Yeah. And so Ashley, I don't know who Facebook user is, but um, Ashley is saying yes. And um, uh, uh, Facebook Sarah. user said, yep. Yeah. Veronique said, yeah. And she was saying, that's what, when I found you. And um, the shift happens. What I see is like stage two is this stage where, in the beginning, everything is like a meteoric rise. Everything is like exciting and new. And you get to this place where it kind of starts to like taper off. That's that edge. And what ends up happening is you end up doubling down on what you've been doing, right? So it's like, I'm going to find new books and read new books. And I'm going to do more of these practices. I'm going to focus more and more awareness, right? And so... You end up doing a lot more, but for a lot less results. And at this point, it kind of becomes this little scary situation where a lot of people can give up on the practices because they're like, well, it doesn't work. I'm still dealing with the same stuff. And it's not that it doesn't work. That work, the, the, this growing up work is meant to lay the foundation for what comes next. It's ne it was never intended to be the end all be all. There's a reason that those of us that have been doing this for a very, very long time eventually find their way, as you guys have found your way to us, eventually find their way into the world of awareness and energetic and somatic and, you know, all these different aspects because you get to that place where it's like, mm, it's just not cutting it anymore. And so... When that dip happens, if you're at this place where you notice a, a you know, diminishing returns on what you've already done. The transition out of that is either like you fall off the cliff and you're like, fuck everything. None of this shit works. It's all bullshit, which plenty of people go to, or you start to ask different questions. And when you start to ask different questions, you open yourself up to this kind of like reawakening process and you can get back on the trajectory of just infinite growth, infinite growth. And so stage two of the activation is when you begin to play with awareness. When you actually shift awareness out of the mind where it's been trapped, and that's this is who has been doing all of the work for many of us for a very long time. 
and you begin to be able to like move it out. So we just completed our intuitive mind event and we really start to practice with people this. This also happens in our level one awareness effect academy where you start to make these moves. And at level two, you begin to shift awareness out of mind, out of perceiving the world through our five senses. And you begin to touch what Michael Singer calls and many uh, Buddhist traditions call the seat of awareness, which resonates in your body. And you begin to perceive the world through that place. And when you begin to perceive the world through that place, what you're in essence doing is you're bringing this incredible energy, right? Like awareness is not your personal awareness or my personal awareness. There's one awareness. And so when you can begin to play with awareness, you're actually touching source. And when you're touching source and imagine you're bringing that God benevolent light energy into you, it, it will remove all that which no longer serves. It will naturally expel and liberate you from the stories and the patterns and the programs that have been holding you back for a very, very, very long time. And it feels effortless because whereas before, you know, there was always this process that you had to go through. Okay, let me uncover this. Let me go back to this memory. Who was there? Why was there? Da, 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 da. You don't have to do any of that. Like you can get to this place of contentless healing, contentless liberation, because what you're allowing through this connection is for that energy to just move through you. And so that's when you start to create, that's like level two, right, is here. And then I'm going to quickly touch on level three and then I'll send it back to Guy. Level three is once awareness has found me, right, you begin to learn who you are for possibly for most of you the first time ever. Like truly the first time ever. And it will rock you. The beauty and magnificence of you will rock you. And so once awareness sits here and it gets me, it gets curious. It's like, well, if this is me, what's not me? And this is where all incredible gifts come online. Like Guy and I are able to track people's systems, right? Like I can actually feel what someone else is feeling thousands of miles away across the globe and feel exactly what is happening and how their chest is tightening or their solar plexus are squeezing or whatever it might be. And as we bring, as my awareness touches that spot, it almost acts like a guide for their awareness to come and meet me, right? And together that creates that liberation. And so awareness becomes playful. It wants to know, oh, well, what's this other person doing? And what's this group of people doing? And what's the field around me doing? And that's where things really become fun because level three of this whole thing is awareness, that same magical connection to source that you first brought into here that created all this release and healing. Imagine being able to take that same awareness and now place it on your finances, place it on your career, place it on your relationship, your intimate relationship, place it on your relationship with your kids, place it on your relationship with your parents. And that same benevolent energy that is always bringing things back to homeostasis is going to start to do that in all of these areas of your life. And that's where it gets really fucking exciting because you begin to manifest magic in your life with what seems like effortless ease. And that's truly like what we're about here is getting you to that place where you can stabilize that and then just walk through life from that place. I'm muted myself. Um, yeah, I totally. So, you know, that's, that's really the focus again, you know, just to kind of start wrapping this up is get straight in the mind, understand how this mechanism works, get yourself out of the hooks and traps that it's creating for you. That's the bottom line. No one can do that work for you. And if, and if your family and friends try to point it out to you, it's going to irritate you to no end. So you might as well learn it yourself and be like, oh, wow, I actually do really have a choice. And, and it's a, and that's the thing, like, you know, the work that we do, we don't look to be uh, gurus in any way, not our interests. We don't want to be responsible for your life, not our responsibility. You know, your circumstances are your own. Elon and I can't control that. However, perception matters. 
and the energy you bring to anything really, really, really matters. You guys know how it is to be around your loved ones or your kids when you're in a high stress situation. You got patience for nobody and nothing. I'm as guilty as anybody, right? Nobody like, and nothing. Nobody and nothing. You start getting snappy and you irritate it. You irritate them. Then like the relationships get sour. Now you got to put in more work to straighten everything out if you're even willing to do that. Or you just lose ties with those people and you go, oh, I guess that didn't work out. Another Another dead body along the way. <laughs> You know, so like it doesn't, that's, that's where we make life harder. We go into the trappings of our patterns. We get what we've gotten before and we go, see, that is how life is. And it, it doesn't have to be that way. We're telling you from 20 years of work, you do this work, you, you, you have the courageous ability to say yes, to do this work. It's going to change your life. We guarantee it. There's no way. There's no way becoming aware of these things does not radically change your life. Is it going to change all your circumstances overnight? Probably not. It happens for people, but probably not. Human beings are a slow burn. I was just watching a, a guy giving an Oscar speech from the 70s. I, I didn't even recognize him because it's not an actor I know, but he said, you know, you want to get somewhere fast, go slow. <laughs> I, I believe that too. Like, you know, transformation is not a weekend retreat, like, like in Fight Club. It's not a weekend retreat. <laughs> you know, it, it, it is a commitment to a way of life, just as anything else, like health or reading or music. You're, the people who are great at it are committed to it. Nobody is just naturally born with all the talents and gifts in the world. Like natural talent is a lie. You know, the, some people have natural talents and they work their fucking asses off. LeBron James is not LeBron James and Michael Jordan was not Michael Jordan because they didn't relentlessly pursue their craft. They're the hardest working people in their craft. That's why they are where they are. Yes, they have the physical gifts without a doubt, but it's it's the practice. It's their it's the way they approach the game. It's like and, and they're extreme cases without a doubt. But like, what's your life worth to you? What's change and transformation worth to you? A weekend like that's what you got you know like that's where you're gonna give it i'll give it 48 hours and see if i can change it all around <laughs> like you know it's just it's a silly way to think but if that's where you get started that's where you get started sometimes you need 48 hours to inspire you you know and to be like hey you know what this is something i want to do this is something i want to get motivated around but like no one's coming to fix your life you're not you know it's unlikely you're going to win the lottery it's unlikely you're going to find a a rich spouse who's just going to take care of all the, you know, financial burdens that you have or that like your health is going to get in order without moving your body. <laughs> like, you know, you can't get a health by sitting in front of the TV, eating snacks all day long. So you got to do something. And so like, look, if you're the type of person who's interested in discovering what that something is, because at the end of the day, all these things, performance in life, relationships, health, finances is foundationally created from the experience that you're having internally, period period. If you don't have any awareness over that, it runs amok also period. So if you want to find out how you can, uh, you know, at least get details for how it is that we work with people, you see the instructions there or above, you go to our Facebook messenger, it's m.me forward slash Satori prime, or you can go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash messenger. I will tell you though, with the way like browsers work, that doesn't always get you to the right place. So if you need the link, you can use the one above our heads here. And uh, that will open up our Satori Prime coaching and development page and just type in the word change. And then we will start replying to you with asking you some questions about what's going on in your life and give you uh, the resources that you need to figure out whether our, our programs and these experiences are a good fit for you. And we'll just ask you very simply at the end of it, are you in, are you out, or do you have more questions? If you have more questions, great. We're so happy to answer them. Get on a call with someone from our team. You can do 15 minutes with them, get your questions answered, see what you guys can do. Even if you have like financial challenges right now, we have tons and tons and tons of ways to get you into these programs um, through financing or payment plans. So like, you know, don't use that as the uh, excuse not to do this if this is something that you really, really, really want to do. Um, and that's that. And, you know, no harm, no foul. If, it, if it's not for you, we totally get it. And even if you're like, I don't know what the hell these two are talking about, but it inspires me and I want to give it a shot. Uh, you can you can give our programs a shot. And if they're really, really not for you, we will happily give you your money back or work with you until you get the breakthrough that you came to get. Okay, it's as simple as that. We're, we're here to support you. There's an incredible community that you can plug into that's global community with people who are here to support one another as well. You'd be shocked once you get in there how amazing it can be. So I'll leave it at that. I love you all. 
Again, click that link, write the word change. We'll send you the details and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks everybody for being here. And we're excited to roll out all the new changes we talked about earlier on. Love you all. Happy Tuesday. Speak Bye to everybody. Soon. Bye everybody.